ഹലോ ജാനകി രാമൻ ഹായ് ബോബി ഐ നോ ചെന്നൈ ഇസ് വെദർ ഈസ് വെരി ഹോട്ട് ടുഡേ ബട്ട് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് ദ റീസൺ യു ഗോട്ട് എ ഫാൻ നോ 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 ഐ ഡോണ്ട് തിങ്ക് ദിസ് ഫാൻ ഈസ് ഗോയിങ് ടു ഹെൽപ്പ് യു വൺ ബിറ്റ് ടു ഓവർകം ദ സ്വെൽട്ടറിംഗ് ഹീറ്റ് ഓഫ് ചെന്നൈ ബട്ട് ഐ തോട്ട് വി ഷുഡ് ഡിസ്കസ് അബൌട്ട് ദി ഓറിജിൻ ഓഫ് ദിസ് സൈൻ വേവ് യു നോ ലാസ്റ്റ് ടൈം യു മെൻഷൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഇൻ ഇൻ അവർ പവർ സപ്ലൈ ലൈൻസ് വി ഗെറ്റ് a sinusoid 50 hertz sinusoid right correct. so uh, i think we should just discuss why we are getting it you know what is the origin and reason for that hmm. so what you see here right can you read the specification of this yeah dc 12 volt 0.18 ampere yeah so i mean you can easily calculate the wattage by the way from you know what we did earlier multiply the volt uh, with current you will get the wattage and how much energy this fan is going to consume right yes so can you connect this to a 12 volt dc supply and show me yeah. you know what happens so i see power supply here yeah this is 12 volt yes Let i think now try. we can stop measuring with a voltmeter we have already yeah. measured yeah, this adapter this already earlier <laughs> and not surprisingly with most electronic gadgets things don't work the first time what happened is this not on no this is on i can see this is on right so just get the wire straightened out and yeah yeah so what happens so this is, fan is working so the fan is working right mm. so when you apply a voltage right across this fan 12 volt and provide the necessary current this fan is rotating very nicely right so essentially what is happening inside this fan is you have a fixed magnetic field okay b and uh, in this you have a coil i've just drawn it as a square coil here but otherwise you have you know some other coils also and you have a current i that is flowing through this coil this current i is a dc current yeah and this was about 0.18 amps right and so what is going to happen is you are going to have a force b i l right which is going to be op, you know equal and opposite For on these two parts. sides mm-hmm. but on this side it's going to form a couple right you're going to have a torque so all the forces balance each other and this coil cannot move but it is going to rotate mm-hmm. you will have a coil i mean you'll have a, a b i l into the uh, you know into this distance here which is going to give you a torque right and that is essentially going to lead to the rotation of this okay. fan okay so there will be a spindle or something to hold this uh, exactly so it's a, it's a more complicated thing as how you allow it to rotate and pass current and all that's mm-hmm. a different that's how a motor is you know designed very carefully mm-hmm. but let's not get carried but away with those and over a basic idea about basic it. idea of so but the main point i'm trying to highlight here is we are passing a direct current and we are causing rotation yeah now i want you to try an interesting experiment uh huh reverse this process i want you to rotate the fan and generate some signal with man- manually and okay. let's see what happens okay so as usual you know we are not going to look at a st- you know a dc signal right we are not going to expect a dc signal it's going to be time varying So let's you know so use you this. mean I'll just use my hand and rotate Yeah can you just rotate and see what happens something like this Yeah something like that you're getting So it's not a constant speed Yeah it will be a speed that will be reducing over exactly. time Exactly you're you're rotating it and it will slow down and come down to zero okay So you are okay with that I'm okay with that okay. because it's a again we are trying to do a first order experiment to understand what's happening okay So I want you to connect this back to the, to the oscilloscope Sure because it's a time varying signal now Okay, and then I want to observe what is going to happen. Let's see whether this will generate something first. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Oh. right so what you see is yeah so evidently there is a jump 
in this voltage. So you rotate it once more. Yeah. Okay. So this is good, what good. Yeah. we are going to see now. So what we did was we just took the fan. We connected nothing to it. There was no power supply connected to it. We just connected the output of you know those two terminals through which we fed the DC current to the oscilloscope. We rotated it and saw what happened. Right. So what we got in that process was the following. Okay, we got a voltage because the oscilloscope is now measuring a voltage, right? It was sitting at some 0.5 volt, and at some point you rotated it and you started it very fast. Yeah. So there was a huge jump, and then there was an oscillation like this, and ultimately it came back to its steady state, right? So this is when you started, and this is when it stopped. Now this is very interesting because what we did earlier was we passed a DC current and we got a rotation. Yeah. Now we are doing some manual you know rotation of the fan but we are getting not just a DC voltage we are getting some oscillations around it. So there is an alternating current superposed over some DC value okay. So it is not going to be easy to analyze exactly what happens here. But at least why we get these oscillations is something that we can explain through basic uh, magnetism. Okay, so I will just go back here and okay. So what we have now, right, is we are again placing a coil like this. Okay, and we have a fixed magnetic field passing through this coil. Okay, this is B. And for now, let's just consider a square coil which length L and L. I am not going, going to make it a rectangle or whatever. This area vector is going to point perpendicular to the surface. Yeah. Magnetic field? No, the magnetic field is in a fixed direction. Okay. But the area vector is going to be perpendicular area to this. Area vector coil. Yes. Okay. okay. So, this area vector is going to f be perpendicular to the surface of that coil. And the magnetic field is going to point like this. So you look at this. This is my A vector. This is my B vector. And this theta is going to be. So let's assume that this coil is spinning at a constant angular velocity of omega naught t. That means this angle that it forms between B and A is going to be a function of t. Mm -hmm. And it is going to be omega naught t. Now, this is the case if it were a constant angular velocity. In mm -hmm. this case, of course, we started with something, it slowed down because of friction and all that, yeah. and we are not able to sustain that angular velocity. So, the omega naught itself is a function of time. So, there will be an angular deceleration that we have to consider. Let us not worry about that for now. So, what happens is the magnetic flux through this coil is going to be integral B dot P A right and this the magnitude is constant okay it is b the area is also constant the the uh, value is constant mm -hmm. but the vector angle keeps changing so this will be cos of omega naught t so what you now see is a fixed coil which is rotating in a magnetic field and the magnetic flux is changing with time and faraday's law of course tells you that this is going to you know generate an electromagnetic force right and emf right emf equal to some voltage which is minus d phi by dt right so this essentially if you just solve you will get b a into omega naught sine of omega naught okay right so this is the this is the beauty in the motor we passed current a direct current the BIL, that force is what led to a torque and it was able to generate. But the AC component was the fact that that was now rotating at an angular velocity omega naught. Now what we are doing is we are rotating this from outside at an angular velocity omega naught and that is leading to an AC current, right. It is not just a DC uh, generation and that is why even the uh, power supply at home and all that is 
AC because the generation itself, you know, hydroelectric power gets generated in this manner, right? You have rivers flowing over a turbine that rotates and that generates some electricity and that is, you know, now distributed through the country, yeah. right? And uh, that's why you have, uh, you know, sinusoids are very fundamental to electrical engineering, right? This is just one of the aspects. But let me ask you one question. Yeah. Did you generate energy out of nowhere, magically? No, I was providing energy. Exactly. So, this is another very important aspect for electrical engineers. Sometimes you might think there is a possibility of a perpetual machine somewhere that will not happen. Energy has to be generated from, you know, has to be put in from somewhere and it will get transformed to something else. So, here Bobby, you know, did all the work <laughs> with his hand and got the fan rotating. And that generated some small voltage, you know, there is yeah. a huge loss. By the way, the amount of work that he did and the amount of energy we got out is not even comparable because there is a huge loss there. But the key point is energy was not generated. It was actually just transformed from one yeah. form to an other. Or converted. Was just converted from one form to electrical energy in this case. And the maximum voltage is decided by? Yes, the maximum voltage therefore will be decided by this, right? So, this will be the amplitude Vp sin omega naught t. So, in the next lecture, we will actually look at the properties of these, you know, sine waves and, uh, you know, link it to earlier experiments that we did as well. Thank you. Thank you.